before we move on to learning more topological spaces, I would like to cover some terms uh, to supplement our knowledge of what an open set is. Namely, uh, if we know we have some set whose complement is open, remember in tau means you're in the topology, and the topology is the collection of all open sets. So this is the same as saying its complement is open. Well, if your complement is open, what we say is you are closed. So just write this down. A with a C upper script is a complement. If you're in tau, then you're an open set. So this says the complement is open, means you're closed. Um, and this is a point of confusion for a lot of people when they first learn some topological concepts because open and closed are not actually the same thing. You would think they were <laughs> uh, just from your knowledge of the English language. Uh, but in fact, while uh, a set could be open and not closed or vice versa, it is entirely possible for some sets to be both closed and open. We have a word for that. So this means A is open, this means A is closed. So if you're both open and closed, we like to say you're clopen. But it could also happen that you're neither open nor closed. Weird. But it all comes down to just uh, knowing what the topology is. Right? That defines an exhaustive list of what the open sets are. And if you just take the complement of every open set, you'll get a list of all the closed sets. And so you can check, um, usually with some, some ease, if a set is open or closed, unless your topology is pretty weird. Um, so let's see some examples. In R with the usual topology, and when I say usual, I mean Euclidean, like we're treating it as a metric space with the Euclidean metric then the closed interval from zero to one is closed according to this definition. And according to the definition you're used to from real analysis, hopefully. This is the real number line. Let's say here's zero, here's one. Then the set we're working with is this thing. Put little closed brackets on it so we know we're including the endpoints. That's the closed interval from zero to one. And it's closed because its complement is open. So all you have to think of is, oh, its complement would be everything else. And those red pieces have to have open sides because they get you know, arbitrarily close to the purple square brackets, but they don't want to include it. The complement is everything but the purple. And certainly, both of those are open. Each an open ray extending to either positive or negative infinity. Okay, so closed intervals are closed. Uh, what about something weird like this? Um, that turns out to be closed as well. If you're another number line, you would see why. So again, I'll put some points on here. Here's zero, one, two, three. I guess that's all we need. And I'll draw R set in purple. So R set includes everything negative as well as the point zero. It includes everything from one to two inclusive. And it includes just the single point, which I'll draw as a little vertical line three. And sure enough, okay, I mean, according to your definition from real analysis, you know this should be closed in that it contains all its limit points or whatever terminology you want to use. But the much nicer definition and topology just says, hey, all you really have to do is check that the complement is a whole bunch of uh, open intervals. Right? And sure enough, those three red sets are open sets in the Euclidean topology. And if we wanted to talk about clopen sets, well, it turns out that the only clopen sets are the empty set and the whole space. Uh, whenever that happens, by the way, you can say your space is connected. 
it's uh, that's not something we'll talk about for a while yet. But yeah, being a connected space is logically equivalent to these two things being the only clopen sets. And let's just talk briefly about why they're clopen. Uh, first of all, we know they're both open by the definition of a topology. Properties one and two said the empty set in the whole space must be open. But they're also complements of one another, right? So the complement of the empty set is the whole space. The complement of the whole space is the empty set. And we know the complement of an open set is a closed set. So they each have to be closed as well. Take a minute to think about that if that didn't make sense. They're open, so their comp complements are closed. But they're mutually complements of one another. So they're both open and closed. So they're clopen. And you can think why uh, nothing else in R, no other subset would be clopen. Give that as a brain teaser. We'll talk more about it when we get to connected sets. How about in R2? So in R2, I have this little set here that I wrote. Ends up looking like a solid disk. And I guess we were drawing those purple, so let's stay with that. So there's my disk. It's all filled in, it includes the exterior. <laughs> Tablet didn't know what to do there. So there you go. Again, according to your knowledge of limit points, this time in uh, Euclidean two space, you should know that this is closed, but you should also know it's closed because it's complement, which again, I'll draw in red, is everything outside of it. Notice I'm using a dotted line to represent the fact that we're not including that border. And that hopefully helps us see that it is an open set. If you're in the red space, you can get arbitrarily close to the purple space, but you're not allowed to touch it because we're taking the complement. And yeah, that's an open set. It's an open set by virtue of the fact that I drew it with a dotted line, but you could make a, a more concrete argument if you wanted to. You could fill this whole red space with open balls in R2. getting arbitrarily close. The closer you get, the more you have to shrink the balls, but you could certainly keep drawing it with a solid boundary. I meant to do open balls. You could certainly fill up that like punched out region of R2 with some huge union of, of open balls. So it is, uh, the red space is open, meaning the purple space is closed. And we could do our like weird space where we're just taking three points and defining our topology like so. So the empty set is open. The whole space is open. The set containing A and B is open. B and C and the singleton B. Those are my only open sets. So I've drawn the five of them in blue. Uh, and it turns out, okay, the empty set is closed because right, it's the complement of the whole space. The whole space is closed because it's the complement of the empty set. So it's the complement of an open, open set. The singleton A is closed. Well, it, if it's closed, it has to be the complement of some open set. And indeed, it's the complement of this. Right, so I could draw it in red. There's a closed set, right? Because it's the complement of this guy. Everything but B and C is just the singleton set A. Similarly, C is closed because it's the complement of this one. So C is a closed set. And uh, AC is a closed set. So AC is the complement of B, and that's certainly an open set. So this is supposed to 
kind of inject into your brain that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between open and closed sets in a topological space. Right, for every open set, you can create a closed set by taking the complement and vice versa. And something you might notice is that closed sets have the opposite properties that open sets do. Namely, uh, well, I guess you can't notice it from this example, you would need some more complicated one, but it holds that uh, instead of finite intersections, we know finite intersections of open sets are open, turns out that finite unions of closed sets are closed. That's, for example, why we had this one set in red and this other set, and their union had to also be closed. The union being all of that. You can also show that arbitrary intersections of closed sets are closed. So it's kind of the opposite of what it was for open sets. Okay, uh, how about some non-examples? So in R with the usual topology, this thing is not closed. The interval from zero to one closed on one side, open on the other. And again, that should agree with your intuition about limit points and all that. Namely, it's missing one. One is a limit point, but you could also phrase it like we were phrasing it before in the topological sense, which in my opinion is much nicer by saying that looking at this interval closed on one side, open on the other. Well, it's not closed because it's complement. What would its complement look like? It's complement, pardon me, would look like this. And so what's the problem? Well, this piece is open. This piece is closed. Uh, in particular, this piece is not open. Right, so the union of those two things is not going to be an open set. And therefore, yeah, so the red set in, in its entirety is not open, so the purple set can't be closed. Similarly, if I took some interval here, I said pi to infinity. We, of course, know that that's not closed because, well, you want to say, <laughs> You want to say it's not closed because it's open. Right? And that's like almost true. Um, yeah, I mean, it is an open set. But again, you have to keep in mind open and closed are not antonyms, they're not the opposite of one another. We already saw examples where certain sets were clopen or certain sets were neither closed nor open. In fact, <laughs> this is neither closed nor open. Right? We just show, showed it wasn't closed, and it's certainly not open. I mean, it's closed on one side. <laughs> so the fact that it's closed on one half, open on the other, means it's neither closed nor open. And so really, these notions of open and closed, um, they're not opposite to one another. So it's not sufficient to say, this thing is open. Really, you have to say, its complement is not open. complement is not open because, well, that's not an open set according to our definition of open using the Euclidean metric or the Euclidean topology. Namely, I mean, if you want to be precise, this point pi is not an interior point in that no matter what ball I put around it, it's going to bust outside of the red, the red uh, interval on the right hand side. Okay. Uh, R two then. Again, we can think about a disk, but this time I'm thinking about the open disk. So now this is our space. 
our subset that we're thinking of. And its complement is actually sort of the closed exterior region. And again, okay, its complement is not an open set. Again, the reason behind that being if you were to take any point on this boundary and put an open ball around it, you would get some intersection with the purple area. So the red shaded region is not open, means the purple region is not closed. And of course, we could go back to our weird three point space and say, uh, if these were our open sets, so let me just draw them again. Those are your open sets. And the set containing B and C, so draw it like this. Well, that doesn't end up being a closed set because its complement is not an open set. Right, the singleton A is not listed here as an open set, so it can't be open, meaning that set is not closed. So that's typically how you test things uh, for openness and closedness and clopen or neither closed nor open. Um, feels fairly complicated after seeing those examples, maybe, um, but in my opinion, ends up being nicer than the real analysis definition. Because instead of caring about limit points, all you care about is the topology. What sets are open automatically gives you what sets are closed. Thanks for watching.